In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an asymmetric masonry layout using the Cody House UI framework. Now, first of all, what's an asymmetric masonry layout? The inspiration came from this page on the Apple website, where we have an image gallery where the images are not distributed in an orderly way, let's say. Uh, they're kind of uh, scattered around the page and they create this interesting layout. So we want to do something uh, similar. So the first thing I did was inspecting how Apple is doing it. And it turns out they're using uh, floats. If we check this element here, for example, we can see that they are floating these elements. Now, the downside of using floats, so basically if you float these elements on the right, this one on the left, and so on, well, the downside is that you have to pick the image ratios very carefully, because, for example, if this may image here was smaller, let's say this image ended here, for example, then the next one would end up on the right. So we want to do something which is a bit easier to customize. We're not going to use uh, floats. So I started looking for a uh, component in uh, the Kodi House UI framework that could help me doing something similar to the gallery on the Apple website. And we have actually a component which is perfect for this case, which is the masonry layout. So I have created a new project, imported the Kodi frame and imported the masonry layout component as well. Now, first of all, let's check the CSS of the masonry uh, component. We have two custom properties, the gap and the auto sides. The first one uh, sets the gap among the masonry items. We are going to change these to zero. The second one sets the uh, mean sides of the columns. So when you reduce the sides, for example, in this case, I want to actually increase the size to 400. We're going to switch from having three columns to two. So that value is the uh, minimum width of the, of the columns. And when there is enough space in the viewport, the plugin is going to auto generate a new column. Uh, so we have one column on the smaller screens and two on bigger screens. And this is our starting point. If we check the structure, the HTML, then we have a, um, an ordered list with the class of masonry list. And then we have the list items, the masonry item. Now, one condition for the masonry layout to work is that all the items need to have the same width. So we can't really change the width of these items to create something similar to this. So what we can do, we can actually use padding. So for example, if we target all uh, of the masonry items, we can set for each one of them, first of all, a padding bottom of uh, uh, XL. When we save, now we have this uh, space below uh, all the masonry items. And if we resize the window, this is going to take care of the uh, spacing when we are on smaller screens. Now, what about the bigger screens? So if we check here, so this is the first grid item, let's say. Then we have another here. There is some space in between. And then this other on the other side. So let's try to create something similar. We can target the first item and add a padding X, always of Excel. So padding X is horizontal padding. So it's left and right. As you can see, we have created something similar to what's here. We're going to do the same for the next one. So we're going to type padding X, X, L and save. Okay, now we are not going to modify uh, the third one. We can change this one as well. So we want the, the fourth image to have the same spacing on the left. We don't want to align this image on the right with uh, this image, which is uh, above. So we want to add just a padding left. So we're going to skip the third uh, item. And we're going to target the first one with the top padding left always of Excel. As, as you can see, we are doing uh, it uh, very easily using this component. So we want to target the next one as well with a padding X of Excel. 
But as you can see, the images look as if they were just scattered around. Uh, one thing we cannot do using the masonry layout is placing an image right in the center, like that. So we can do that removing this element from the masonry list. Let me remove this as well. And now we can create, um, we can have this element outside and we can just have a class of padding X, uh, XL. And as you can see now we have something similar and uh, that's it. I mean, we can, uh, we can do something else. We can target all of the figure element and then we can uh, just add a fig caption if we want. So image caption, then we can add some uh, style using the utility classes of Kodi frame. So maybe color contrast medium, text small, and uh, a margin top XXS and save. And now each one of the images has a caption. One final touch could be importing uh, uh, a reveal effect component so that when we scroll down, uh, there is a nice subtle reveal effect on uh, the images. So we have another component, the reveal effects component on, uh, on Kodi House that we are going to copy right away into our project. Let me copy the uh, CSS first. Copy and paste. And then we're going to do the same for the JavaScript. And save. Now, how to use this component? We can check the info page where we can see that we need the reveal effects class on all the items that we want to animate. And then we have to pick one of the animations. So we're going for translate up. Okay. So back to our structure, we can target, uh, first of all, the list items. The second, this one. So reveal effects and then reveal effects translate up. We can copy these two classes and apply them to the figure element as well. And now, uh, when we refresh the window, we can see that when you scroll down, the images appear as if they were translating from the bottom. It appears it's not really working on the last one. Let me check one second. And it's because we didn't copy the reveal FX class. Save. And now it's working uh, on the last one as well. Here we go. This is how you can create an asymmetric masonry layout using the Kodi House UI framework. Thanks for watching.